Truth is revealing. It is described as light by Jesus and his teachings. At first, it could be harsh, but this is not the purpose. The purpose is to build righteousness, to put in right order as God created, and to penetrate the very core of the human being. This is where sin is birthed, and this is where wisdom wages her war for the soul. Good morning, and welcome to another episode of His Generation Podcast. You're listening to His Generation Podcast, a weekly exploration into biblical truth as we explore the Word of God. His Generation Podcast airs every Sunday morning, so grab your Bible, and here we go. In today's episode, we'll be covering Proverbs chapter 4. I've titled this, An Understanding Heart. Uh, We will do selective verses, and uh, we'll be looking at verses 6, 7, 10, 13, 14, 15, 18, 29, 30, and 33. But I want to start us off in verse 1 to kind of set the pace of what we're going to be doing here. It says there, The wise woman builds her house, but the foolish pulls it down with her hands. Again, The wise woman is closely associated with the personification of God's wisdom or lady wisdom. Here I see this verse as uh, very fitting to our study this morning uh, because we're going to explore some revealing verses. To some, they might come off as harsh. However, the purpose of the Proverbs is not to put down or insult the reader or those the text speaks of. Rather, it is to expose truthful observations for the purpose of building up the inexperienced person who is humble enough to gain knowledge of God. So let's allow Lady Wisdom to build her house. Now, before we start, I'm going to be speaking about uh, some specific words here that are going to be often mentioned in these verses that we're covering. Uh, we'll, those words will be heart, understanding, prudent, and knowledge. And I like to build context when I do teach uh, because that way the audience, yourself, would understand when these words are commonly used that they do have some, you know, density or some uh, depth to them. And so the first one, heart, if we start to look through the Proverbs in context, uh, there's different meanings and there's different associations that it has. So the ones that I, I look at most are this idea when you hear the word heart in Proverbs, you think of like, the inner man or the mind or the will or understanding in general. Uh, It can also mean on the opposite end of just like knowledge and thinking and reflection and memory, Uh, but also too it can speak of your conscience or your inner appetites, emotions and passions. Uh, At times it can also be another word that's used for uh, soul or it can also talk about the seed of courage within that person, especially we see that when we get to our Proverbs 31. Well, in this case, I'm going to look more at this idea of the inner part, you know, the the moral character of a person. And that's what we're looking at when we see this word heart through uh, some of the verses here in Proverbs 14. Understanding, another word, and it's closely associated with the heart, uh, but we're looking more of the intelligence, and we'll see that in verse 29. Or also, too, in verses 15 and verses 33, we see it to be distinguished as being insightful or discerning. And I think they also use the word considers in some of the translations of Proverbs 14. The next word, prudent. This is a very great word to understand that we've kind of lost in our current vernacular of English here in the United States. But the word prudent is this idea of being cautious are sensible and uh, crafty in a good sense because sometimes craftiness is associated with uh, devilish type of behaviors we see in the Bible there. But in this, it's a good sense. It's like uh, to be uh, wise as a serpent and innocent as the dove, as we saw there in the New Testament. It's that same idea, just crafty in a good sense. And then the final word that we're going to be looking at that I'd like to add some definition is the word knowledge. And in this case, it's talking about to know of a person, to have more than just, hey, I know Sam, his name is Sam, but it's more like, 
I know Sam because I've been friends with him for the last 10 years and I know what he likes to do on his leisure time and I know uh, what type of job he has and what kind of talents he has and how he benefits other people or whatever. That's the idea of knowledge when it comes to these verses here. So let's get into it and we'll start on verse 6. A scoffer seeks wisdom and does not find it. But knowledge is easy to him who understands. So first we see a scoffer searching for wisdom on his or her own terms. Uh, What do we know about the scoffer? Well, from previous verses, we know that they reject correction. They're proud. They hate to be corrected. Sometimes they come off as joyless when it comes to others. They like to cause strife and contention. And basically, their abomination to their fellow mankind in nature. And this is why they will not, (laughs) I repeat, they will not find what they are looking for when it comes to seeking wisdom. Now, on the other hand, or in this case of someone of the opposite characteristics, they will gain the knowledge of God, which is wisdom's pleasurable outcome to the soul. That's why it says, but knowledge is easy to him who understands. Verse seven, go from the presence of a foolish man when you do not perceive in him the lips of knowledge. So you won't find wisdom with a foolish person. And sometimes that's obvious. So uh, don't associate with such a one. And uh, this is also said in uh, verse uh, 20 of chapter 13, where it says, He who walks with wise men will be wise, but the companion of fools will be destroyed. And so that's the idea or the concept that we see there in verse 7. Now, going down to verse 10, this is where we have our first heart word. It says, the heart knows its own business, and a stranger does not share its joy. And so this is an interesting insight to the human nature. It seems to be uh, inferring that no one can really know the complexity of the intents and thoughts of someone else. That's, that's something you need to understand. Jeremiah said it this way. He said, the heart is deceitfully above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? And uh, rather, we understand that only the Lord according to his response to that Jeremiah 17 verse, knows the heart. Because it says there in the next verse, Jeremiah 17, 10, I, the Lord, search the heart, I test the mind, even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. And so we see there that the Lord is the only one that can know the heart. Verse 13, even in laughter, the heart may sorrow. And the end of mirth may be grief. Now, mirth is, uh, it's a perfume, but it's associated in the poetic sense of like a, a joyful pleasure. So let's keep that in mind. Um, another insight is the, uh, the, the hiddenness of one's heart. Uh, a person can be both happy outwardly, like they're laughing, they're having a good time, yet have deep emotional pain at the same time. And so that's what we see here is that duplicity when it comes to uh, someone's uh, outward compared to their inward. Verse 14, the backslider in heart will be filled with his own ways, but a good man will be satisfied from above. Well, someone that is truly rebellious will be satisfied with the consequences of their um, intentional actions apart from God. And uh, this is a great insight to understanding that one who struggles with living out the professing devotion to God. Verse 15, the simple believes every word, but the prudent considers well his steps. So who are the simple? And I've talked about this in previous Proverbs teachings. But these are those that are naive and they just lack the experience knowledge. They will go to folly if not turned away, but they're definitely not prudent. So the simple aren't totally negative. They're not ones that are rejecting God. They're ones that might go to folly, but they're not totally rejecting God. They're just inexperienced. And then when it comes to the prudent, like I had mentioned before, are are kind of our our lost word in uh, our current vernacular. 
This is the idea of one who uses prior knowledge to react. Or if not, they don't have the knowledge, they seek out the knowledge. And, and they possess the foundations of wisdom because they receive correction and they're well thought out. And so with that, they can predict the outcome of a matter. That's one who is prudent. And then lastly, a good compa- a good comparison verse mentioned in this is, uh, for instance, in Proverbs chapter 22, verse 3, where it says, A prudent man foresees evil and hides himself, but the simple pass on at our punishment. So this idea is like you conceal yourself in order to avoid some kind of calamity. And so that's what this verse is uh, pointing out about one who is prudent and considering their steps. Verse 18, the simple inherit folly, but the prudent are crowned with knowledge. So simple mindedness, like I said, it's not horrible, but it's definitely inexperience. And so because of the inexperience, sometimes it produces folly, or in this case, a better word is stupidity. And uh, we see that often with people that are uh, inexperienced, and it's kind of that saying where you say you got to, you know, break a couple of eggs to make an omelet. And so you have to step forward in your simplicity sometimes and, and, and fail a little bit to learn to be better next time. So that's, that's when we see the idea of uh, simplicity or simpleness or the simple minded in these verses. Uh, in the introduction of Proverbs, that uh, clearly states one of the book's main purpose is for the reader. It says this, to give prudence to the simple and to the young man knowledge and discretion. So that's where we get our idea. So the simple lack prudence, and upon reading Proverbs, like this one we're reading here, <laughs> they will begin the process of understanding or of establishing this change of mind and heart. And with that thought, then why is the author so harsh in this verse? Well, again, going back to my initial statement, truth revealed is necessary to allow God's light to transform you. And that, that's going to occur within the, the inner soul, and we see that often. That's the, the heart that we're talking about here. Verse 29, He who is slow to wrath has great understanding, but he who is impulsive exalts folly. And again, we have some, you know, definitions there and when we're thinking of understanding, we're thinking of the intelligence like I mentioned before and when we're thinking of folly, we're thinking of uh just uh, uh stupidity or here's a, here's a good definition I grabbed, a fountain of foolish actions. That's the idea of folly. That's a good one. And then again, I like to define words so that way we can get a better understanding of what we see in these verses and we can apply them to these observational truths that we see in society. So impulsive is the same word that is used in verse 17 for quick tempered. And it's the idea of few or small amounts or shortnesses of one's mental and emotional actions. So keep that in mind. That's the, the idea of impulsive or impulsive reactions and behavior. A person with great understanding produces control over their mental and emotional state. So we need to keep that in mind. And uh, what kind of understanding does wisdom provide? Of course, knowledge of God. And why? Because, you know, he is slow to wrath. And uh, this is part of their loving expression. And it's, you know, it's what's involved in loving your neighbor, basically. So the knowledge of God is going to produce image bearing of God. Does that make sense? Furthermore, in the original text, impulsive includes the word used for spirit in the sense that of one's person's uh, core or senses and emotions. And this is interesting because uh, wrath or anger, according to the biblical presentation, comes from an inner desire of worldly pleasures, but not being able to get them. You know, we see it there very clearly in the book of James, where it says, James 4, verses 1 through 3, Where do wars and fights come from among you? Question mark. Do they not come from your desires for pleasure that war in your members? You lust and you do not have. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. 
You fight in war. Yet you do not have because you do not ask. And you ask and do not receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it upon your pleasures. Interesting, interesting. And so according to this, the the wisdom of James, you know, uh, it, the anger starts internally and then manifests in some kind of external behavior. And into the worst case, it happens what's murder, right? And that's the idea behind there. So he who is slow to wrath has great understanding, but he who is impulsive exalts folly. Verse 30, a sound heart is life to the body, but envy is rottenness to the bones. I love this word sound. Um, it's a word that is not common in our common day speech, uh, but it's a word that is used for this idea of healing, both in mind and body, or refreshing. Uh, there's deliverance and, and remedy, and it's like this this relaxed mind. That's the idea of that word sound. And so I love it. A sound heart is life to the body. Also, the word life is the same word used in the Genesis account in which God creates every living thing. That's interesting too. So it's taking you back, alluding back to the Genesis account there. So my assumption in this verse is that envy is such a part of, of the perversity in the natural order of things that it reverses what we were created for. Uh, Just a little side note in the New Testament, sound is used to describe doctrine, minds, words, and speech. Verse 33, wisdom rests in the heart of him who has understanding, but what is in the heart of fools is made known. And lastly, wisdom just like anger, is an interior quality. And we need to remember that. And then resting, this verse here, signifies the ideal of ceasing from your calamities. And the inner core of the fool is obvious, and those around the foolish person become quickly acquainted with his or her foolishness. And so both these verses and uh, verse 29 represent the truth behind all that. As I said in the beginning, truth is revealing. However, the purpose of it is to build righteousness and to put things back in order the way God created it. And that can only happen from a very interior sense of penetration to one's soul. And that's what the truth of God's word does to us. And so when you hear these truths and they seem very on point or on the nose, as some would say, it's not because they're there to hurt your feelings or to cause harm to your sense of uh, morale, but they're there to deconstruct or to break down the sinfulness or the unrighteousness of your human nature and to face you with light in a dark world. And so I hoped this portion of Proverbs chapter 14 was illuminating to you, that it perked something in your understanding about yourself and where you stand when it comes to practicing righteousness. Well, thank you for joining me for another episode of His Generation Podcast. Thank you for joining us at His Generation Podcast. To receive more information about the podcast, please visit our website, hisgeneration.net, or check out our YouTube channel, His Generation Podcast, for the video format of this broadcast. His Generation is a production of Generation Mars Media, located in Orange County, California.